Okay, so in the previous tutorial we were looking at um, object-oriented programming and we looked at um, objects and different types of uh, properties and methods that we can um, apply to objects. So in this tutorial we'll be using the getElementById method um, and that's a method that we can use um, on a HTML element. Now it's for this tutorial, it'll be assumed that you know a little bit of basic HTML. So if you don't know some basic HTML, then you need to um, probably go in, uh, brush up on that, have a look at some tutorials. Um, and it's also handy to know a little bit of CSS as well. So because we will be, uh, or because we are using JavaScript in web pages, we're using JavaScript alongside HTML and also, we will be using it with CSS. So, I'll go through some basic HTML stuff in this video. Um, but if it's not making any sense, then I highly recommend going and having a look at some HTML tutorials and trying it out for yourself. So, basically, in HTML, um, which is in this, uh, well, this is a HTML document. So, basically, with HTML, you have something, uh, things called elements. So, things like paragraphs. Um, headings, images, videos, um, underline text, bold text, um, italic text. Those HTML elements have uh, their own tag that you can use to um, use them. So, for example, in HTML we have the paragraph tag, which is P inside angle brackets. And when we use this tag, we can then write our paragraph and it will show that paragraph on the web page. And every tag, or nearly every tag, has a starting tag, so this one is just P, and then a closing tag, so this one is P with a um, forward slash before the P. So it's the starting tag, and then the closing tag. All right, and that's just a regular paragraph inside those two P tags. If I wanted to add another paragraph, and the next line down I could have, this is another paragraph with bold, uh, underlined, and italic text. And then I could close that paragraph oops, with the same P tag. Now, I can use tags to make that text bold, this text underlined, and this text italic. So, the bold text is... Guess what? It's a B. And we need to close that. So only that word, whoops, only that word is bold. And underline is, you guessed it, a U. And italic is an I. Okay, so there's going to be two paragraphs, a regular paragraph, and then Below that is another paragraph with the word bold being an actual bold. The word underline is going to be underlined and the word italic is going to be in, or well, the words italic text are going to be in italics. Okay, and those are using HTML elements or tags, right? We can use another HTML tag called h1, which is for headings. So this is a heading. And there are different sizes of headings, h1, h2, h3, and so on. So h1 is the largest, and then the other headings get uh, smaller. All right, don't worry about what's on line 34, because we're going to have a look at that in a minute. So I'll save that and run in Chrome. All right, there we go. So this is a regular paragraph here. This is the paragraph which we um, use the bold tag, the underline tag, and the italic tag. And this is our heading. So that's just some basic HTML formatting. So using paragraphs and headings. There are a heap of other tags that you can use to add videos and images to your page, to add uh, links, to change the size of text and the color of text. Um, and then you can also use CSS code to style your pages to sort of add different backgrounds and effects um, and to add you know different columns and um, different colors for different sections of your web page. So 
that's just a basic overview of HTML elements or HTML tags, right? Now, if we go back up to here in the comments, I've added some, just a little bit of um, an explanation of what the get element by ID method is. Basically, the get element by ID method, it will search through an entire, that should be HTML document. So it will search for an entire HTML document and it will look for an ID with whatever ID we specifies, specify as a parameter between these, um, well, the parameter that we specify here, but will be within quotation marks. Um, so if that doesn't make sense, we'll in a second. So the syntax that we're going to use is document dot get element by ID and then in brackets and in quotation marks we insert the ID there but the element itself needs to have that we're trying to access needs to have a matching ID so in the example below it's if we have a look here we have created a function and in this function we're creating a new variable called paragraph okay so because this function it, because this variable is in, declared inside the function, it's actually a local variable, not a global variable. Okay, so remember that. Now we've got document dot get element by ID and then paragraph. So the ID is paragraph. Okay, and then we have paragraph dot inner HTML equals you clicked here. So inner HTML refers to what's inside the actual tags in the paragraph element and in this example we scroll down what's inside the inner html is the text or the words click me okay so if we go back up to line 30 we've got a regular paragraph here using just an ordinary p or paragraph tag we've also got a regular regular heading tag here h1 but we can give our tags or elements an ID. So this paragraph has an ID called paragraph. All right. This paragraph here has no ID. All right. So in line 34, we've created a paragraph and we've given an ID called paragraph. And then there's an event. There's an on-click event. So when we click on the paragraph, which says click me, it will run the change function. Alright, so when we click on click me, it will run this function called change. If we go back up to the function, this is what happens when we run the function. So, it will grab the element by its ID, which is paragraph, and then it will change the inner HTML of that paragraph to the text you clicked here. Alright, so let's have a look at that. Let's launch that in Chrome. Now, if we click on this paragraph here, nothing happens. If we click on this paragraph here, nothing happens. If we click on this heading here, nothing happens. But if we click on the text that says click me, it changes the text to you clicked here. Now, the reason that is because these two paragraphs here have no ID. This heading also has no ID, but the paragraph down here has an ID which is called paragraph. And we could call that ID whatever we want, but we've just called it paragraph in this example. Now when this function here, now basically when we click on the text, click me, it runs this function called change. So there's an on-click event it runs the function called change. And that function will change the actual text of that paragraph from click me to click here. You clicked here by accessing the inner HTML, which is what's inside these two angle brackets, by changing that to what is specified here. And it can only do that by accessing or getting the element, the P or paragraph element, by its ID, which is paragraph. Okay, we could change that ID to whatever we want as long as it matches here, as long as it matches with what's up here. Okay, if we give this paragraph an ID as well and we added the on click event there, it would do exactly the same thing when we clicked on 
this regular paragraph, it would actually change it to you clicked here. Alright, so that's just an example of how to use the get element by ID method and how to um, change something on your page. Now it's a pretty simple example of just changing some text that you click on, but you can also use it to, if you click on an image, it could replace an image, um, which could be something useful in um, things like games. You might click on a character, it might make the character jump, so you could replace the image of a character with an image of the character jumping in the air, something like that. All right. So thanks for watching. Uh, in the next tutorials, we will we'll, we will be working a little bit with more with the get element by ID method, um, and we will be um, working with some images as well. So we'll also be using the image HTML element. All right. Thanks for watching.